Ready. Number. Call to order the uh, Stokes County Board of Commissioners for a planning meeting on June 6, 2023. It's 6 p.m. Um, the um, first order of a business is the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'll stand for the pledge, and then we'll do the invocation after that. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. We remain standing. I'll do the application. <laughs> Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedom to meet here tonight to do the county business. We ask that you give us strength, guidance, and wisdom. Lead God and direct us as we make decisions uh, for the county. Uh, these things we ask in your most gracious name. Amen. Okay, the next item is uh, disclosure of conflict of interest. Does anybody have a conflict with the business we're doing tonight? Sonia on there? Hey, Sonia. You on there, Sonia? You want to check our room? She's still on there? Mm -hmm. She's probably just in a bad spot or something. We'll check back with her before we vote. <laughs> now she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's on the call. You want to redial her one time or you? Yeah, we'll try. Try one time if you can't, we'll move on. Okay, good. Good to have you. Next item on next item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion for approval? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, uh, agenda is approved. Um, the next item on the agenda is old business. Um, Eric, do we have any old business you need to discuss? No, sir. Don't? Okay. All righty. Then the next item on our agenda, next item on our agenda is new business, and the first item, why don't we just kind of go with, can I cut off, yeah. if she, can she call back in? Can I just mute? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. The next item of business, uh, under new business, is the rezoning request for case number 23-329. Uh, for Patrick and Candace Dotson, and I'll turn over to Eric for that discussion. All right, commissioners, good to be here tonight. Um, Rezoning comes to the board as a street rezoning from RA, Residential Agricultural, uh, to HB, Highway Business, for mini storage warehouse. The applicant is requesting that this, re this rezoning to allow for a small storage warehouse for a snack cake business. The 3.02 acre tract has 346 feet of road frontage. Uh, planning staff sees no problem with this request and feels that the expansion of the warehouse for his weekly storage of snack cakes for his business uh, supports the business friendly objective as stated in the 2035 comprehensive plan and provides potential tax base increase due to expansion of commercial property. Um, Stokes County has the following requirements for a property used as a mini storage warehouse. One, the maximum height of the building shall be 20 feet. Uh, number two, outside storage shall be limited to non-commercial RVs, watercraft. 
Number three, storage of hazardous, toxic, or explosive substances shall be prohibited. And of course, no business activity other than the rental of storage units could be conducted on the uh, premises. Um, So basically what it is, again, it's just a stored metal storage warehouse on his property there uh, to store his snack cakes for his business. He would come in from time to time to pick up some. Uh, he might be in there uh, one time a day, and then he goes out on his route basically and uh, to serve his business at that point. Just put her on the cell phone. Or Eric, she wants to be. That's okay. Sure. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. <laughs> Eric's just getting started, so he's describing the property. Yeah, basically. And so the request is to build a 30 by 40 storage building for the warehouse storage of his snack cake business. Um, it's 3.02 acres, and the site location is at 1067 Amostown Road in Sandy Ridge. Um, and basically, Sonia, what he's wanting to do is uh, this would be storage for his snack cakes. He'd be coming in time to time throughout the day uh, to fill up his truck so he could go out on his route uh, to deliver his cakes to different stores throughout the area. And basically what I said was that uh, it appears that uh, it does support the Stokes County 2035 plan uh, because it is we try to be business friendly uh, to our people here uh, and it does provide potential tax base increase due to the expansion of commercial property. I'll pause here for any questions you, you may have. Any of the board have questions about the little Debbie cake business here? That's what he puts out. Yeah. I'm good. I don't have any. Okay, I think we're all good with it. Uh, it, it was uh, uh, all good information with uh, let us know what's going on in the package. I guess his, his uh, he listed uh, for his community meeting uh, a bunch of bullets and stuff, but were there any com real complaints or anything at his community meeting? There were none. Uh, okay. There was only one concern that he stated was that his neighbor said um, they were afraid that the lights from uh, the property, which I'm, my understanding is there wouldn't be any as far as signage or any of that kind of thing. Okay. So, uh, aside from that, no, there was no That's right. They mentioned lights a couple different times yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Or I'm sure he'll work with them if that becomes an issue. Okay, good. So what do we need? A motion then to approve? Yes, sir. With it says all the right words. So who's ready to do that? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Those county commissioners would like to approve the rezoning request case number 23329 attachment A where Patrick and Candace Dodson are requesting to rezone one tract of land comprising 3.02 acres identified as Post County Parcel 6070-53-7100 from residential agriculture to highway business to build a 30 by 40 metal storage building as a warehouse for iron horse distributing. This proposed amendment is reasonable and in the public interest in that the property is currently zoned RA, residential agriculture, and is being proposed to be rezoned to an HB highway business zoning district. This, pro this property is in an area with mixed development of residential and commercial properties in the Sandy Ridge, North Carolina area. And the planning board recommends that the county commissioners approve the zoning map amendment. This proposed, um, I think that would do it. Um, it is consistent with the Stokes County 2035 comprehensive plan and other adopted plans in that the parcel is zoned RA and the requested zoning district is HB. 
The same zoning district is approximately 675 feet from the property to be rezoned and it's likely to be developed for commercial uses. Yeah, Hey, Sonia, Sonia, could you mute? Could you mute your thing? Um, or do something. And the property. That's Sorry. okay. The property is consistent with the growth area. G1 low density growth area development as identified in the Sussex County 2035 comprehensive plan. Well done, Ronnie. I second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to move in now. It's time to talk. <laughs> Is there any other discussion? Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. aye. aye for you, Sonia. Aye. Yeah. Okay. So it passes unanimously. Okay, the next item on our agenda is the zoning text amendment uh, for RV as temporary residence. And uh, Eric, you can go through that with us if you would like. The Stokes County Planning Department is requesting that the following text amendment be added to the Stokes County Zoning Ordinance. The purpose of this section is to provide a permit process for the temporary occupancy of travel trailers, recreational vehicles, motor homes, and campers to ensure compliance with applicable zoning, building, and environmental health regulations. Travel trailers, recreational vehicles, motor homes, campers shall be permitted as a temporary residence during the construction of a property owner's new single family dwelling, major remodeling to the owner's existing single family dwelling, or a residence that has substantially been damaged. Um, and moving on, uh, the recreational vehicle temporary stay uh, goes on to list the uh, the items uh, that would be required. Number one, recreational vehicle RV temporary stay permit is for the constructing of a new residence or reconstruction of a residence that is no longer habitable or has been substantially damaged. Number two, a permit for recreational vehicle temporary stay can be obtained once a building permit has been issued for new construction or for renovation or repair. This does not apply for obtaining permits for double wide or single wide mobile homes. Number three, at the time a site plan is submitted for a building permit, the location of the recreational vehicle temporary stay must be shown on the site plan and meet the setback requirements. All recreational vehicle temporary stay permits for renovations will need to have a temporary saw service, a separate temporary saw service uh, electrical permit. Uh, temporary saw is already included with all new construction permits. Number four, the recreational vehicle temporary stay is valid for a maximum period of 18 months. The cost is $500 for the permit. A property owner may request a one-time extension of six months for delays caused by exceptional reasons beyond the control of the property owner or contractor as to be determined and approved by the planning and inspections director. The cost for the six month extension is $250. Number five, a permit will not be issued without a finalized septic system from environmental health with the site plan showing single family dwelling and recreational vehicle that both were approved for use on the septic system. Uh, number six, the septic approval for renovations will be determined by environmental health Septic systems should be marked off in a manner to prevent encroachment during the period of construction. Number seven, the recreational vehicle temporary stay must have an approved potable water supply, well or public water finalized through the Environmental Health Department. And number eight, no more than one recreational vehicle temporary stay permit may be issued per individual parcel under these provisions. A pop-up or pop-out camper will not be allowed. Number nine, the RV for recreational vehicle temporary stay permit will expire 30 days after receiving certificate of occupancy for the permanent resident structure, at which time the electrical, water, and septic connection must be removed. Uh, number 10, if the property is located in a special flood hazard area as determined by the official firm or defirm maps of Stokes County, the location of the recreational vehicle temporary stay must comply with the standards of the Stokes County Flood Damage Prevention Ordinance. Number 11, recreational vehicle use is prohibited 
inside the Stokes County Zoning District with two exceptions. One, recreational vehicles are permitted to be used in approved campgrounds. Number two, recreational vehicles are permitted to be used if complying with the recreational vehicle temporary stay permit in the residential agricultural district only. Number 12, recreational vehicles shall not be used for camping, storage, man caves, or as a primary or secondary residence within the Stokes County Zoning District. And number 13, recreational vehicles shall not have any structure added to the RVs such as porches, patios, decks, rooms, roofs, or any other structure to be added to an RV within the Stokes County Zoning District. Um, goes on to add the recreational vehicle definitions. Any Class A, Class B, Class C, fifth wheel, travel, tra travel trailer, pop-up, or any combination of the before mentioned is considered a recreational vehicle. And lastly, um, we actually, uh, while we were working on this document, uh, House Bill came across Bill 466, uh, requiring us to establish criteria criteria to allow for the use of temporary dwellings on residential property for the duration of construction of a permanent residential dwelling. And uh, that should be on your next page. Now I will add that this bill has not uh, became law at this time. So. And we can that, still I'll do it whether it's law or not if we want to, right? Sir? We can still do this whether it's law or not. Absolutely. I just feel like we're kind of getting ahead of the game a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Exactly. This is well done. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Hey, um, is that it? You know, Y'all have any guys have questions? Any of the board members? I got a question. Go ahead. So, like, what about, <clears throat> like, say, people that have, they like to come up and hunt their own property, so they put a camper. So maybe they come up during deer season on weekends or two or three days at a time. How does that conflict with this? Well, if someone comes in, it's, it's only going to be on a very short-term thing. They're going to come, they're going to go. It's on their property. Uh, they're not connecting to any kind of sewer. Um, and as long as, of course, there's no complaints and that type of thing about it, I personally don't see a problem with that. Uh, one thing that I would add, and I realize that we do have people that, have, that are already living in RVs in the county, and I, I just want to say that Planning and zoning is not in the business of making people homeless. Uh, and of course, we're not, we don't want to put anyone in jeopardy as far as uh, being out on the street because of, of an ordinance. So just want to make that clear that we don't support throwing someone out of a home. Uh, we would be willing to work with, with anybody. Just to follow up on that, we, we uh we wouldn't do that immediately, but we would not allow them to continue to live in an RV, right? That is correct. I, I know of one recently where you guys uh, terminated a situation like that. So. That is correct. Okay. So what you're saying basically is that if somebody's doing that, you'll work with them, but they, but it's not allowed. You're not allowed to live in an RV in the county. That's correct. Okay, you got any other questions? Do you have any questions, like Mr. Menhall? Yes, I would. Son, you have any questions on this? Might be muted. I have one question. You don't? Okay. I got two or three real quick. Um, uh, my first one was um, three, actually. What, how'd you come up with the amounts of the permit for this? It says in the statute that you attached it, it has to be a reasonable fee. And I was just curious how you came up with the 500 and the 250. That is a very good question. And of course, as, I'm saying there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just right. Yeah. I'm just and a curious. lot of this was prior to my coming here as far mm -hmm. as setting up the fee schedule okay. and that type of thing. So to be able to answer that, I would probably need a little more time to be able to answer that. Probably. Okay. Do the board think it's reasonable? I do. Five hundred and fifty. Yeah. So you probably don't need to do anything else. And I think it seems reasonable to me. I just thought you might compare it to another county or something. 
what it may it, have. It is my understanding that they did that, yes. Okay. Because all the statute said that you attach it would be reason had to be a reasonable fee. So that's correct. That's to interpretation. Uh, the uh, next question I had was um, number twelve, bullet number twelve. It says the RV shall not be used. Recreation of vehicles shall not be used for camping, storage, man caves, or as primary secondary resident. That's talking about this. Is that talking about in general, or is that talking about the specific ones that we permitted for this purpose? Because where I'm going with the question is, it I, I kind of understand the man caves and the camping and stuff, but. Uh, storage seems like it would be pretty hard to enforce whether somebody's doing storage. So I wonder if you want to. I can understand that. Unless you think, if you, th I mean, by definition, it's going to have something stored in it. So I guess I'm wondering True. what the, if, if you got a definition for what's allowed versus not allowed as far as storage. And if you don't, then you might all take that out. I don't know. I'd get to see what the board thinks on it. That should stay in. Or well, I think you're opening yourself up if you leave storage in there. Personally. Yeah, I kind of do too. So I don't think I don't think it's a gray area. So, and uh, guess what? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a little bit too gray for me. I mean, like if I have say all this aside with the permit for the what we're doing here for the new construction. Say if I just have an RV and I have it parked in the driveway until I get ready to go to the next place I'm going in it. Do we want to tell people they can't store stuff in there? I mean, I don't think so. I don't think so. So yeah. I, I think ought to be on, I'd take that out if I was you, if the Lord's okay with that. Or are they stored inside and outside? <laughs> <laughs> right. Good point. I totally understand. And we can strike that from okay. that. So we can make that, we can do that as part of the, uh, the uh, motion and the last thing it says in one of the previous bullets that this applies to all the campers except the pop-up right pop up or pop out i think it said um but then in the definitions of rvs it, it has pop up in there so, so i don't know number if that eight. Would, uh, do what it's number eight i think you're talking number eight yeah yeah number eight says um and number eight says no more than one RV by an individual. A pop up or pop out camper will not be allowed. And so I maybe just ask the attorney if that's, if one of those contradicts the other. Whenever you put the definitions in of what you're talking about, you include the pop up. Uh, it's probably okay, I, I guess. I mean, because you made it clear that you can't do the pop up in the previous bullet. The pop up is the definition of an RV. I guess it is. Huh? They're totally different. Oh, are they? Yeah. I want to take that out too, and take out the pop-up link just to make it. If somebody c complains about it, then they will. The one that drafted this is the one that has to explain it. So okay. justify it legally. So y'all think? So you're saying that in the, one of his definitions, it yeah, it says you can't use pop-ups on number eight. Right. And I saw that. But then you go over here and you say the definition of the RVs includes pop-ups. I'm just kind of wondering if that contradicts each if one of them. Con if that contradicts it by including it in the definitions. I think the def the definition may probably applies to. RVs across the board. I take pop up out of the definition. Would you? Yeah. 
I think what it, I think what number eight is saying is you can't you can't you know have one rec say a camper and you got a permit for it and then you put a pop up. They're saying that that's not allowed. In other words, it's just one one RV because it, and the other def is just one RV per per permit per location. Well, I interpret it to say that, that you can do to do the RV permit, but you can't a pop up can't be the one RV you do. If it's going to be, you know, you're putting one RV up mm -hmm. for live in while you're building right. a house. Right. I took that to mean that that you can't that can't be a pop up. It can't be a pop up. Pop out. I mean, that's yeah, the way well, it reads to me. Yeah, you'd have to decide then if the definition includes it a pop up. I mean, I interpret it a little bit different, but I see what um, Rick's saying. So it, I look at dollar signs. I reckon RV is about a hundred plus, and then I don't know what a pop up. But it is no, it's not even a Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Volkswagen fans. <laughs> so I think if you change, but if this definition applies to more than just this. Um, applies to more than just this one thing we're approving tonight to do the temporary permits for the construction, then we probably should leave it in. It just needs to be, I think it needs to be, you guys need to be, have, be clear on what, what they can or can't do. Okay. The way I read it now, right, well, the way I read it now, you're talking about, you get into this stuff 11 through 13, you're talking about RVs in general. You can't live in them, you can't do this, that, or the other with them kind of gets away from the part about what we're doing um, for the permitting of the one while the construction's going on. So um, so if that, if it, like 11 through 13 apply to RVs across the board, I think you'd probably have to leave the pop up in there. And then um, I think, I think, and then the number eight applies to only to this text amendment where we're saying they can get a permit and live in it while they're building a house. But you can't do that, you can't use a pop-up for that reason. I don't know what the reason. I don't know. I, I, why, you, why they can't use a pop-up. I, I can, ask, I can strike like, that for number eight. Like you, though, it's the big difference. Um, RV place in Royal Hall, I pulled that out a couple of times and looked at the RVs and then looked at the little pop-ups and it's tremendous difference. I guess they were probably thinking when uh, this was drafted that um, that a pop-up is not good enough to live in for a year or 18 months. It's, I mean, it's too, too much like a tent. <laughs> and all the other RVs are more substantial. I mean, well, when we think about it, I mean, you could put up a huge tent. <laughs> you live in it <laughs> mm -hmm. all year round. There's nothing that... It doesn't fall into a definition. <laughs> yeah, I think looking at the the septic aspect of it too, I I, yeah. I don't know as far as pop ups are concerned. Uh, I think some of them may or may not have a restroom depending on the size, uh, or a, a bathroom where they can, you know, uh, comes with a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's that might be the differentiation. <laughs> that may be why the that was drafted that way because of septic. We just leave it like it is. I, I don't. I don't think it'll cause any great problems, except for that storage. Take that word storage out. Okay. Everybody's good with that. Yeah. Somebody make a motion. You need us to make a motion now and approve this, right? You got anything yes, else? Okay. We'll get a motion to approve the, this text in addition to this text amendment. Motion to approve with the uh, word uh, the zoning text amendment. Is that what you want? Yeah, the text amendment with the word uh, with uh, and we strike the word strike uh, the word storage, storage in bullet number twelve. So make that the motion. Is that the motion? I make a motion that we approve zoning text amendment and we strike the uh, word uh, storage amended. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, we're good with that. Have you got any further business to do, uh, Eric? That's all that I have at this time. Okay, great.
Thank you very much. I thought we had other business to discuss. Did I, I mean, number two? There's none unless added by the board. Okay. You want to add some? Yeah, I got two. I wasn't planning on adding any, but if y'all do. I got two I want you to look at. It's going to be brief. Okay, go ahead. We got the solar farm thing coming up in August that we need to address. And I would like you to work up the cost savings new software for your department would save the county. That's all I got. That was short and painless. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> solar farm is the uh, moratorium, right? That's correct. It, it expires in August. It, it's, that's what I remember. Yes. Yeah. You need to be here before you know it. Yeah, we need to decide if we want to try to have it extended, I guess. Nothing else I make motion with. Okay, I don't have any other business. Do you have any other business? Sonia, you have any other business? I don't think she's on there anymore. She don't, so. um, okay, you made a motion to turn second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned.